Hello, my name is Matt Callen, and welcome to Biggie's Time here at the Round Table. So we're one day after Christmas, one day until Biggie's play begins. I'm going to look back at the non-conference schedule in the Biggie's, update my Biggie's power rankings. Uh, during week one of the season, I had teams seated like this, Villanova, Xavier, Seton Hall, Creighton, Providence, and then St. John's, Marquette, Butler, Georgetown, DePaul. So I've now seen a little more. It's time to update those rankings. Right before conference play, look at each team's resumes in the non-conference. We will start at number one with the undefeated number one team in the nation, defending regular season and tournament champion, Big East tournament champions, it's Villanova. I mean, people say they kind of missed out on what could have been two big wins in the Bahamas for Battle for Atlantis, when Arizona and Purdue both lost in the first round. But they still leave the Bahamas with wins over UNI and Tennessee. And UNI is always a good mid-major team that they should win the Missouri Valley without Wichita State there anymore. But they're always a good team. That's a neutral site win over a tournament team that did uh, push Xavier at home uh, last week. But they did lose that one. That's a quality win. And then Tennessee... Who's been pretty good. Another quality win. Another neutral site win for them. Another neutral site game was at the Garden against Gonzaga. Which Villanova totally handled them. Mikel Bridges breakout game. So they really, those are really their three big wins. UNI, Tennessee, and Gonzaga. And then you look at all neutral site. Just really the two true road games at St. Joe's and at Temple. Temple's not a bad win. I mean potentially a tournament team. One thing you say is they don't they, don't, they didn't really get a big road game and they didn't get a real I mean Gonzaga will wind up being the kind of their signature at a conference win. Number two, we're gonna look at Xavier. Xavier's been I uh, got the one loss against Arizona State, who's absolutely been rolling. They've been great. The two big wins for them have been really Baylor and Cincinnati, both at home. Then they picked up a true road win at UNI. Three really solid wins. I think Xavier with the one loss, I think they probably have the best resume of any Big East team so far. They're slotting in at two. Beating out number three, Seton Hall. Tough neutral court loss against URI around Thanksgiving. Might have been on Thanksgiving. They really have another couple of really nice wins. A neutral site win against Texas Tech. And then they go to Louisville, true road win at Louisville. That's a signature, really, out of conference win for them. But then, of course, they go to Rutgers and they lose. Not a terrible loss and against an improving Rutgers team, but not ideal. Rivalry game, there's some leniency there, so they're going to slot in at three. Going down the line, we got Creighton up next. They uh, they went to Gonzaga, and they lost that game. They lost the neutral side game against Baylor, which they really dominated in the first half, and they totally blew it late. Would have been a nice win which they could have used because not a lot of great wins for Creighton. The UCLA win and Northwestern win looked like they were going to be bigger wins at the time. Both teams, especially Northwestern, really fallen off. I mean, the UCLA win over Kentucky will help. Hopefully one of those two can recover and make give Creighton you know, a nice win out of the conference. Finishing out the top half, number five, we got... Butler, I mean, really for Butler, it's been no real bad losses. They lost, they had three losses, Maryland, Texas, and Purdue. I mean, all potential tournament teams, not not really a bad loss there. They got the good neutral site win against their former coach against Ohio State, Chris Holtman. And then at number six, we got Marquette. Marquette uh, really had few good chances, couldn't really deliver. They did beat LSU in Maui and then subsequently lost to Wichita State in the next round. Would have been a huge neutral site win for them, but Wichita State's a good team. Then the other two, two home losses. Not ideal, but Purdue and Georgia. Another couple of chances to get a nice win. Number seven, we got St. John's. They've done a nice job so far this year, especially after what we've seen the last few years. They've 
And they pushed Arizona State without Marcus Levette in a neutral site game. And then they lost to a pretty good Missouri team, also a neutral site. Not a ton of quality wins for St. John's, but they've taken care of business. They've looked better than they have. Putting them in at 7th, right below Marquette. Number 8, you got Providence. It's been a little disappointing. I think that's fair to say. They've been a little banged up recently with uh, Diallo and Cartwright. Both been hurt. Best win is looking like the win over Washington. Not great, but Washington did beat Kansas the other day, so that helps. A couple nice resume builders in there that they did lose. They lost at URI. Then they lost the neutral site game against Houston at the Mohegan Sun Center in Connecticut. But that was, that was both with Diallo and Cartwright hurting. So there's some excuse there. Then, I mean, a couple, few games ago, they had the, the loss against UMass. So not great for Providence, but Big East, plenty of good teams. They'll have plenty of chance to redeem themselves. Kind of got to go out and do it. So that's going to lead 9 and 10. We're going to look at Georgetown's Paul, who's been in the cellar for a little while now. Georgetown really beaten a bunch of nobodies. <laughs> And really the one game to test them, they lost to Syracuse. That was at home. They lost in overtime. Not a whole lot to say about Georgetown. And DePaul, they did, I mean, they tested themselves a little more. They played, um, they put the Michigan State game in the Notre Dame game. Which they both played them tight for a half. And then wound up getting blown out. But, I mean, definitely a DePaul team that looks better than recent years. Still not quite there yet. So that will do it for Biggie's Power Rankings. Biggie's Play starts tomorrow, and thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, share. And remember, there's always another seat at the round table, so leave a comment. You can tweet at us at roundtabletime. Thank you.